Parasha Bo, this week, my second son, Yaakov ben Yosef, is celebrating his bar mitzvah. I asked myself, what meaning could I give to the next generations about this portion? What was the essence of this event? The word zikaron in Hebrew, memory, differs from what we call history in the West. How? According, according to Pierre Nora, memory is the memory of a past lived or imagined. It's a collective memory, even if lived psychologically as an individual. History is a constant problematic and incomplete construct of what has ceased to exist, but has left traces. History can be, for example, like Mayan or Egyptian archaeological remains. They leave physical traces, but no memory. In Shmot 1214, it says, And this day shall be for you a memorial, and you shall keep a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And it gives us the idea that whenever we remember it, it is to relive what happened that night in Egypt not only an observable, strange, or distant event, but we must instill the same emotion, plot, and anguish of that 14th of Nisan around 13th century BCE. But what exactly do we celebrate? Unleavened bread, the Pesach dinner, the Haggadah, the Siddur, the story? It seems to me that the most central point is that we celebrate that there is a master, an Adonai, a unique one, life, our savior who gives us the opportunity to choose to live under his limits, to have a full life on our physical plane. I thought, what message could I give to my son in particular? Yaakov ben Yosef, the story is that God was pleased to create a physical world and to contain these souls within a physical body so that we can be aware have conscience that God is good, that God is our creator, that God is life, that he is righteous and merciful, and he wants the best for us. However, in this life, he decided to create our ability to choose, called free will. And the choices we make, whether we like it or not, all have consequences. Man as a race decided to choose his own path, moving away from the good that God had created for him, and this resulted in the rise of evil men, usurping the position of God, such as Pharaoh. And these men were so evil that they blinded themselves, believing their own lies and positions of being gods on earth, and believing that they had the right to exercise this dominion over others, going against what was established at the beginning. Hmm, sound familiar? On the other hand, common man also choose, chose to follow these incarnated gods in their desire not to relate to God, preferring to live under the rules imposed by other men to the point of allowing themselves to be enslaved and to leave, lead a miserable life. But God is so good. He does not reject those who choose to live a relationship with him, but he allows them to know his truths and they chose to, and if they chose to make correct decisions, they would bring benefits to them and to their descendants. This is how God blessed Abraham and promised him a land. When Israel went down to Egypt, they chose to be slaves. No one fought. No one revolted against Pharaoh, but they chose to live out of fear and subordinate themselves, even if this involved physical, psychological, and spiritual pain. But God, who was so good, remembered what he promised to his friend Abraham and decided to bless the world with Moshe and Aaron through them, he had us remember, first, there is no other God on earth. He controls everything. No one man is God. Second, that nature and the physical world obey his voice and are instruments of him. Third, he wishes to live and dwell among us. But if we choose to live under other gods, we will not be able to approach him because we will seek what is not God. Therefore, he decides to show the world that he is God and to his people, Israel, to whom they must choose to follow as God. That is why when we decide to live in Egypt, our life is enslavement. We live to work, 
even in useless things like, for example, making bricks. And our lives, instead of widening or expanding, are reduced, diminished, and become narrow. That is, we limit our existence to the desire of another and will not be able to live the life that God wants for us. He wants us to have a full life. So he took us out of Egypt to relate to us and to get to know him. But he is so good that knowing that his energy is so pure, decided to set certain limits so we do not harm ourselves and that we live within these limits. By limits, I mean knowing how far we can go without harming ourselves. Not obligations or prohibitions, but how to safeguard life and live it fully. So we learned several things from this parasha. First, that rebellion is as serious as divination and arrogance as the sin of idolatry, as in 1 Samuel 15, 23. This happened to Pharaoh. He was arrogant, foolish, rebellious, and stubborn, which led him to the point of being as inflexible as hardened plastic until he arrived at his breaking point, which not only brought a nation together, but also destroyed his family and son. Second, God is our light and our salvation, Psalm 27.1. Anyone can tell you that an organization, a religion, a nation, a leader, or even yourself are the solution to any problem. But really, we must remember that there is only one God who saves us, and that not even our good, will, good deeds will. Third, we must choose life. Live according to his words, Devarim 30, 15 to 19. Therefore, he gives us his Torah, because it is our GPS to enjoy a full life. And finally, we must share the good, be a model, light to the world, the salt of the earth to others, so that they draw closer to the eternal, Isaiah 49, 6 and 42, 6, and live in a world with meaning and life for all its inhabitants. The spirit is not to lose heart in the life of doing good as Rabbi Shaul wrote in the Kehila, in, to the Kehila in Galatia. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Galatians 6, 9 to 10. Today, my Santiago, Santi, you become a man before God and the Kehila. That is, you are responsible for your decisions. If you choose to live like this, there will be meaning for your life, and your life will transcend death, and you will be eternal and a blessed memory for future generations. And Yochevtcha, I love you very much. Shabbat Shalom. Oh. <laughs>